welcome back to this next video and I want to talk about what are the top three uh, chakras in the Kundalini model and and just kind of the, the another part of the circle in my model. The next one is a very interesting one because it's such a unique capacity that that only the human being has, as far as we can tell. Other, other animals do have some range of communication, but not to the depth and to the, the detail and nuance that we human beings do. It's just, it's just really off the charts. That's the fifth chakra the chakra that revolves around the throat and speaking and self-expression. And I've given it the name of the Creator. This is, I, lo I love the, the phrase in the Gospel of, of John where he talks about, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And through the Word was all thing, were all things created, and without the Word, nothing that was created was. It's such a picture of how, you know, let there be light, and there was light. How, how we literally express or, or speak into existence that which we are. Now, in the beginning, this creative power that is self-expression is only expressing, expressing the egoic mind, which is nothing more than an embodiment of the tribal laws. With a little bit of you in there, and to make it to make it interesting, <clears throat> but it's not really you. And so at that point, everything being expressed, everything being created, every idea of yourself you you express communicate to somebody else isn't really representing you. You're literally creating a different version of yourself. Now this happens even even when you're young, this creative power. You begin to express it. It's not just words. It's not just the voice. The word is everything that expresses you. The way you dress, the people you hang out with, the things you, the things you like to do, the books you read, the thoughts you have. They're all expressive of this fundamental sense of, of identity that, that you have. And that as identity has, has to become shifted. But we realize, as that happens, as consciousness emerges, and that's where this ultimately goes, um, that what you are expressing, which literally is bringing into creation through the power of expression, is creating who you are in the world. And of course, the mission of of, 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 of bringing clarity and reconciliation to this is that this more and more becomes the power of expressing who you really are and not who you've been forced to become. So this really is your power of being in the world and making things happen and making things come to life and creating anything from a relationship to a business to a work of art to uh, to anything at all you know the whole law of attraction and realizing your dreams is really not attracting at all it is it is the power of creation of our of what it is and who we are expressing who we are embodying who we become and manifest that to the world so it is the power of creation. You speak, act, uh, think, believe, and, and uh, express yourself into existence, quite literally. So how do we now take this power and begin to make it serve who you really are? Because notice, so far, the who you really are has not appeared yet. There's an openness in the heart. You know, the peacemaker is, is, it doesn't fight with everything. It's the power of love to, to reconcile. The expression is our power of, to create. But what is it that we're creating? And that leads us to the sixth chakra, also known as the, the forehead chakra or the third eye and associated with psychic sense and all, and all of that. I've called it the visionary. We all know of visionaries, you know. The, you know all the all the great sages were were visionary visionaries. We think of a visionary as somebody who can who can just they can see the future. They can see things that are going to happen. Well, so can you. 
That energy of the visionary lives within you and needs to be liberated. You know, our vision of what is possible in the beginning is completely driven by the, by the, by the tribe by this reconciling of these elements with, within us. And, the, the, and then the sense of self, this is me, this is not me, limits what we'll even let ourselves dream about. Oftentimes in exercises, exercises I'll, I'll do with groups, there's, uh, I have somebody just kind of envision something that you, you want and don't have. And sometimes people have a hard time even reaching, getting a dream or holding it for a minute. That's how shut down this, this is. And so our vision of what's possible gets very restricted. Well, as we begin to explore this aspect of ourselves, we're beginning to liberate that energy. We're beginning to see that the vision you can have does not have to be any longer tied to the, to the simple, to the, simply the the um, instinctual, to the egoic mind, that it is a different kind of mind altogether. It's open. It's spacious. It doesn't have limits. It doesn't have boundaries. It is. It is total flights of fancy. It is, uh, it is the imagination uh, liberated, set free, so that it doesn't have to restrict itself. This is the part of you that's not interested in how something happened, just what. It's artistic vision. It's seeing things that nobody else can see. It's seeing things that aren't there. It's, 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 it's looking at, at some, little ob, uh, some little objects say, and seeing an entire uh, business, the, the value of it to, to humanity. It's hearing a sound and, and suddenly that becomes a, a song. It's seeing a piece of junk and seeing a sculpture. It's, or it's Michelangelo looking at a block, a, just a block of marble and seeing David in that right? and then chipping away everything that doesn't look like, that doesn't look like David. This is a capacity we all have that we have simply n not really been, unless you were uh, overtly and naturally inclined towards uh, art or writing or something like that, most of us don't realize the, the power of that, that we all possess. In a few people, it becomes very prominent uh, early on, but it's everybody has it. And not only that, and this is really important, this vision transforms the storyteller. The stories that the storyteller tell change the more this vision opens. Restrictions begin to drop, and a new sense of identity emerges. One that is no longer bound solely by the instinctual. One that is free to have way more of the nymph than it had before. One that understands the nature of the tribe and can intelligently work with that energy of survival without it inhibiting you. So you don't need to know the how is this going to happen or have come up with some kind of elaborate strategy or do the massive action thing. Instead, there's just this pure knowing of, of what matters to you, of what's important, of what's beautiful, of what you want to contribute and bring to the world. This is the vision that gives you the gift that is yours, your unique gift to give to the world. And in fact, when I start doing the, the, the workshop, I start with this. Because I found that so many, for so many people, this is so shut down and so locked down. I, I used to teach the chakras and all the way I did it before, up to about the almost just the last time that I that I took this up. I would just start with the first chakra and work my way around the way I did as I'm initially presenting it. But I realized that spending so much time on all of the instinctual stuff, people were getting locked in there. So now I start with the vision. Let's go there first. Let's begin to explore that. And in the context of exploring that, suddenly the inner conflict, turmoil, resistance that we feel towards that vision begins to really show us the, the, the deep underlying mechanisms that we have to come to terms with and reconcile. And that leads us finally to the most mysterious of all of the chakras the crown chakra, which I call the sage. Yeah.